Welcome back and in this video we are going to continue our discussion on the glenohumeral joint and here we have the accessory structures or the additional structures in the glenohumeral joint and this is a part 2 discussion and part 1 we had already discussed about the articular surface labrum etc and now we focus on to the capsules and ligament of the glenohumeral joint you know that the capsule and the ligaments of the glenohumeral joint is very important and we need to have a great understanding about the capsule and the ligaments of the glenohumeral joint because of the diverse role and because of the greater mobility and less stability that exists in the glenohumeral joint right now we are going to discuss about the capsules and ligaments of the glenohumeral joint Yes, uh, we are going to start this discussion with discussing about the capsule of the glenohumeral joint. I have earlier mentioned in my previous video and hip or knee complex. The capsule is a structure. For example, if there is a joint cavity like this, capsules are structures which covers the joint capsule in all directions. Okay, like in the anterior direction, in the lateral sides there will be, posteriorly there will be and together there is to be like a capsule okay that's why we call it a capsule so glenohumeral joint would be having capsule like this here 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 and a complete one capsule a complete one covering for the glenohumeral joint many of you would know by now that the glenohumeral capsule has some various peculiarities you might have heard that the capsule is not a strong one absolutely right the capsule in the glenohumeral joint is a weak one it is a loose one but at the same time it's a large also so when the capsule is so tight and very rigid or very uh, uh, small what can happen is that the range of motion that is available in that joint or the mobility of that joint rest is restricted but at the glenohumeral joint we know that there is the greatest mobility in the body it's a joint with that that great amount of mobility and as a result of that the capsule is loose and large as well as it is a weak one also the capsule is not completely weak it is weak in two directions which you need to remember because those directions you can see the dislocations or subluxation of the glenohumeral joint that is in the anterior direction and inferiorly so in two directions the glenohumeral capsule will be weak that is in the anterior and inferior direction for example if this is the glenohumeral foursome and here you have the humeral head like this okay the capsule of the glenohumeral joint will be lining the superior aspect then there will be in the anterior aspect there will be the capsule then inferior aspect there will be the same capsule i am doing with the different colors for you to understand in posterior also we have and in this in this anterior aspect and in this inferior aspect the capsule is weak one okay it's a weak and always remember the capsule in the glenohumeral joint is very large in fact it is a two times it has two times the surface area of humeral head okay humeral head you might have heard we, you might have remember uh, studied that uh, the glenohumeral fossa is very small compared to the humeral head right but here the scenario is opposite that the capsule is in fact very large than the humeral head two times the surface area what can be the uh, result of that the result of that uh, except the first year students who listen to this you might have seen in the practical life when you give mobilization when you give attraction to the glenohumeral joint you can see that the humeral head can translate about 2.5 centimeter away from the glenoid fossa but still it can go back or it still be in place itself that is because of this uh, greater surface area of the capsule that greater surface area enables the joint to be distracted without being dislocated so that is an advantage of this greater surface area and the greatest advantage is 
it indirectly result in greater amount of mobility on all directions so, uh, flexion extension medial rotation lap rotation abduction adduction etc okay so this is all about the glenohumeral capsule the capsule is a weak loose and a large one definitely it is weak in two directions anteriorly and inferiorly it is a large one of course having two times the surface area of the humeral head and as a result it allows about 2.5 centimeter distraction do you know what is distraction if you are watching if you are a first year student you might have the doubt if, for example if this is the glenohumeral joint okay what can happen over here when we apply some traction we can just distract this joint like this okay the humeral head can translate still that won't get for, uh, go for the dislocation or subluxation okay that is the because of this loose capsule so the capsule itself gets uh, stretched and uh, it will enable such amount of a uh, distraction or translation to take place right yes and uh, something else that you need to remember about the glenohumeral capsule is that the capsule of the glenohumeral joint is having two times the surface area and the capsule is also uh, tight in one particular position that is when humerus is or when the shoulder is abducted and lat rotated okay this position the capsule is tight and this is the close pack position of this joint okay this is the close pack position when abduction and lat rotation if you just try you can feel that this uh, from this loose uh, nature the at this point everything over here gets uh, tight and taut and that is the uh, strongest point or the close pack position of this joint because the capsule is tight and stretched over at that position now i told you the capsule is weak therefore it has to be reinforced by some structures because if it is completely weak what can happen the joint can go for dislocation it's one of the structure which is holding this one okay when this capsule is completely weak the humeral head may get translated uh, translated in either direction okay so it is reinforced by various ligaments the capsule is reinforced by various ligaments uh, okay and also by the tension of a rotator cuff muscle the tension of a rotator cuff muscle so that is because we know that the rotator cuff muscles which are the sits muscle we'll discuss that later all that muscles are getting inserted nearby to the capsule or to the glenohumeral joint and as a result this structures as well as this structure ligaments uh, reinforces the capsule of the glenohumeral joint right that's all about the glenohumeral joint capsule always remember the capsule of the glenohumeral joint is a weak one and as a result of this you should remember one additional point uh, subluxation or dislocation of the joint is more prone in anterior direction the dislocation of this joint is more prone in the anterior direction or anterior dislocations is, uh, are more seen in the glenohumeral joint right and now let us discuss about the ligaments of the glenohumeral joint as we discussed in the previous complexes like in the hip or knee complex the ligaments can be broadly divided into two types what are that the capsular ligaments which we discussed which we just now we saw that ligaments reinforce the capsule so that ligaments are the capsular ligaments and the second one is extra capsular ligament extra capsular ligaments okay the capsular ligaments and extra capsular ligament right now you need to remember just let me draw that that's the same figure for you to understand more easily so we have the glenoid fossa and other things over here now the capsular ligaments are three in number okay i told you now in shoulder complex we have an easy strategy to remember the ligaments that is just remember which type of joint it is for example sternoclavicular joint has sternoclavicular ligament acromioclavicular have acromioclavicular ligament scapulothoracic joint has which ligament in fact no ligament because it's not a true anatomical joint it's a functional one okay don't forget that and this joint will have the ligament from its name itself what is that that is the glenohumeral joint so instead of by hacking glenohumeral joint has glenohumeral ligament ligament just relate it and study then you can do it in more easy manner so the glenohumeral ligaments okay the capsule will be lining the glenohumeral joint in the superior direction right 
so it will be the superior glenohumeral ligament okay anteriorly it will be seen uh, when this is superior this becomes anterior one becomes the center of it that is a middle glenohumeral ligament and when that becomes middle in the lower part we have another pair of ligament that is the inferior glenohumeral ligament inferior glenohumeral ligament so these are all glenohumeral ligaments what's that so easy to remember remember what is the capsule and this capsular ligaments are in fact the thickening of the capsule itself it will be seen associated with the capsule so just remember that figure of the capsule a capsule is lining the glenohumeral joint completely so the capsular ligaments in fact will be lining in the superior direction over here okay and this ligament is known as the superior glenohumeral ligament right the this one would be the anterior direction but it comes in between superior and inferior so it is better we call it as a middle glenohumeral ligament Okay. And finally, we have in the lower pair that is the inferior glenohumeral ligament. So these are the three pairs of ligaments that are seen, the three pairs of capsular ligaments of the glenohumeral joint. And the extra capsular ligament is known as corocohumeral ligament. Corocohumeral ligament. Of course, you know that the coracoid process is somewhat over here and that lines the humerus. Okay, that ligament would be known as the coracohumeral ligament. Clear? Now let us discuss about the capsular ligaments in detail. Okay, so what are the capsular ligaments? So the superior glenohumeral ligament, the middle glenohumeral ligament and the inferior glenohumeral ligament. Okay, now what about the superior glenohumeral ligament? Okay, superior glenohumeral ligament this arises from the the word itself is self-explanatory always relate the words to biomechanics and don't by heart that is it arises from the yes is there superior is there so it arises from the superior glenoid labrum superior glenoid labrum here okay it arises from the superior glenoid labrum that's easy to understand okay and it is attached to the uh, anterior aspect of neck of humerus anterior aspect of neck of humerus clear so that is so easy this arises from here and it is attached somewhat over here okay like this okay that is the superior glenohumeral ligament more clearly upper neck of humerus if you are not uh, if you don't want to go in specific no need to remember upper neck code okay just remember the neck of the humerus then you have the second one that is the middle glenohumeral ligament right so the middle one would be arising from it is seen almost like an anterior no so this is a superior glenoid labrum so this will be the anterior aspect of glenoid labrum anterior glenoid labrum so easy to remember okay and attached to the neck of the humerus that's anterior aspect of humerus anterior aspect of uh, humerus so it is so easy so you to understand here you have the sgh here you have the mgh and definitely here we have the igh inferior glenohumeral ligament and then one is next one is the inferior glenohumeral ligament which is in fact arising from the inferior aspect of the glenoid labrum and is attached to the humerus itself humerus itself so that is all about the ligaments and their attachments okay you need to remember the superior glenohumeral ligament always remember superior so superior glenoid labrum if you get this one right you can definitely write this one nobody is going to ask what is middle glenohumeral ligament so this is superior this comes anterior and this comes inferior all of them are attached to the neck uh, humerus except this one in specific to the upper neck of the humerus this both are in the anterior aspect of anterior and inferior aspect of humerus clear yes right now let us how we need to understand few important concept with regard to the ligaments and they are uh, like uh, a term known as rotator interval capsule interval capsule i told you know 
Al always relate biomechanics with the terms. Okay, then you can remember it. For example, here you have the interval capsule. Interval means what? You have an interval in your college life at this in between morning session and noon session. Okay, that is in between some structures. So interval means it would be in between. Rotator means what? It's not that rotation that is happening, but it is related to the rotator cuff muscles. Okay, rotator cuff muscles. And you know the rotator cuff muscles are supraspinatus, infraspinatus, subscapularis, and teres minor. Okay, so uh, what is this, a peculiar structure known as rotator interval capsule? These are some structures which actually do some function. What is that? You can remember. I'll draw you some another diagram. Okay, here you have here the humeral head. Okay, we have two rotator cuff muscles to discuss that is a supraspinatus, it's getting inserted like this, okay, and then the other muscle is the, that is a subscapularis, it gets inserted like this, okay. In between two of this muscle, there is some space, right now, you can see that, that is an interval between these two muscles. So, in this space, you have some ligaments and some structures of the glenohumeral joint. These structures are known as the rotator interval capsule. So, those structure will be the superior capsule, the capsule's superior part, the superior glenohumeral ligament, and of course, above the superior glenohumeral ligament, we have the uh, which one I draw with another color. Yes, you have the coracohumeral ligament. So these three structures, which bridges the gap between supraspinatus and subscapularis tendons, are known as the rotator interval capsule, and they include superior capsule. Okay, the word is superior itself, superior glenohumeral ligament, and a superior above the glenohumeral ligament, superior you have the coracohumeral ligament, and that structure would be the coracohumeral ligament. Am I right? So that is so simple for you to remember. If you just remember these diagrams and uh, the basic concept over here. So rotator interval capsule are structures is made up of superior capsule, superior glenohumeral ligament and coracohumeral ligament and they function to bridge the gap between the supraspinatus and the subscapularis muscle. Okay, that's clear, right? And then you have to study another important term over here that is known as the IGHLC. More than the, in, uh, rather than calling the inferior glenohumeral ligament, inferior glenohumeral ligament, we allow to call it as the IGHLC. What is that? Inferior glenohumeral ligament complex. What is that? Inferior glenohumeral ligament complex. That is because this ligament is in fact made up of three parts. This includes an anterior part, a posterior part and in between this anterior and posterior uh, there is an additional part known as the axillary pouch. An axillary pouch. That is why this ligament is known as inferior glenohumeral ligament complex. We have some complex in the uh, elbow complex, like a lateral collateral ligament complex. Okay, in angle also you have. So this all one includes the anterior uh, glenohumeral lig sorry, anterior band of the uh, inferior glenohumeral ligament, the axillary pouch which is seen between them, and posterior glenohumeral ligament. So exactly if you draw the glenohumeral ligament inferior, you have to draw it like this. Okay. It comes like this. Here there is a slight depression. The pouch-like structure that is known as the axillary pouch. So this is how that uh, inferior glenohumeral ligament would be sitting. This is the anterior band. Back side you have the posterior band, and here you have the axillary pouch. So inferior glenohumeral ligament complex is a broad term used to denote the inferior glenohumeral ligaments three bands that is the anterior band posterior band and an axillary pouch in between them that's all about the anatomy of the ligaments now we need to understand the function of the ligament when i am telling you about the function of the ligament always remember which is the direction which direction of the glenohumeral joint is the weakest one we studied the capsule is weak in anterior and which direction inferior direction okay so anterior and inferior direction so if the capsule is weak in this direction this ligament should function to provide stability in that direction am i right 
So the capsule, if the capsule is weak in that direction, the ligament should function so as to produce some additional stability to balance the weak in, uh, weakness of the capsule. So let us see about each ligament and its function. So the first one is a superior glenohumeral ligament. When our arm is at side, okay, at side, zero degree of flexion or zero degree range of motion, the superior glenohumeral ligament provides anterior and inferior translation stability or it provides restraint against or limit, restraint, no need to remember, limit anterior and inferior translation of humeral head, right, of humeral head. So the, when the arm is at side, the superior glenohumeral ligament limits the anterior and inferior translation. Of course, superior glenohumeral ligament and also rotator interval capsule, which you will see in the static and dynamic stabilization of the shoulder. No need to worry about that, but at this point, remember this one limits the anterior and inferior translation of the humeral heads. Clear? Okay. Now, this is at side now, 0 degree. So, what about when it increases to abduction of a 60 degree of elevation or abduction? 60 degree. Okay. The next one. So, you can see that uh, here, superior one will be here. Okay. In this point, the superior one will become slack. And the in middle one gets taut. So, at 60 degree of abduction, it is the middle clean of humeral ligament which provides stability in against the inferior translation. It mainly provides stability against inferior and not much against the anterior translation. So, inferior translation, right? And what happens if that increased amount of range of motion is achieved? For example, um, less than this 40 even, 60 even, if 45 degree of range of motion, <coughs> with rotation that means if abduction is combined with rotation for example when i am going for normal range of motion of abduction usually when i do my activities there is some de degree of abduction combined with rotation happening either medial rotation or lateral rotation when that rotatory component is there when there is medial or lateral rotation the inferior glenohumeral ligament complex takes up the function so these are the three diverse uh, diverse or three different means in which the glenohumeral joint uh, translations are being prevented by this ligaments that is at zero degree inferior superior glenohumeral ligament provides anterior and inferior translation restriction okay at 60 degree the middle glenohumeral joint provides the inferior translation restriction at 45 degree the rotatory stability is provided by the inferior glenohumeral ligament complex 45 degree with rotation okay this also provides a anterior and inferior glenohumeral uh, translatory stability stability or restriction or limitation so it limits that translation okay now who we need to get a very small concept additional that is the inferior glenohumeral ligament is in fact having inferior glenohumeral ligament complex right now so it will have an anterior band it will have a axillary pouch and it has a posterior band okay when abduction is increasing and rotation starts uh, this axillary pouch which was loose becomes a tight okay that's the role of axillary pouch it becomes taut as abduction progresses and rotation starts if it is a lateral rotation that is happening, the inferior translation and anterior stability is provided by the anterior band. If it is a medial rotation that is combined with abduction, then the posterior band is providing the stability. You can just simply guess it now. Right? So this is abduction, okay? This is lateral rotation. And here anterior band is the, it will get stretched. Whereas uh, this is abduction, this is medial rotation and at this time the posterior band which is the uh, just the posterior aspect of the inferior glenohumeral ligament complex will get out. So remember that when it is an anterior translation the lateral band of the glenohumeral joint gets out. When it is a medial rotation uh, with abduction, with abduction always okay, uh, the posterior band gets uh, out. All right. That's the peculiarity of glenohumeral ligaments, which one? The superior, middle and inferior glenohumeral ligaments. Now the last ligament in this complex that is the extracapsular one, which I have already discussed, that is the coracohumeral ligament. Let us just have a quick look on to that. Coracohumeral ligament. The coracohumeral ligament is an extracapsular ligament, right now. 
extra capsule it is seen superior to the superior glenohumeral ligament okay it arises from the word itself gives you the hint that is in the under surface of coracoid from the coracoid process okay it arises and it has two aspects okay the first band and second band the first band attaches to very simple it is supraspinatus insertion supraspinatus insertion and the greater tubercle okay whereas second band inserts into lesser tubercle and other muscle which we have discussed near to the subscapularis insertion subscapularis that is the peculiarity of this ligament that is the first band is inserted into the supraspinatus and greater tubercle second band is inserted in the lesser tubercle and the subscapularis right so it is like this so here in between that there is a gap okay so uh, that is of course the rotator interval capsule so the coracohemoral ligament becomes a part of the coraco uh, sorry the rotator interval capsule so these two bands forms a tunnel like structure okay and through that structure the long head of bicep breaking passes so in between these two bands the first and to second band there is a tunnel like structure through which the long head of biceps brachii muscle is passing that you just have to remember in an addition as an additional point okay so this is all about the coracohemoral ligament it's an extra capsular superior to superior glenohumeral ligament coracoid process to first band inserted into supraspinatus and greater tubercle second band inserted into lesser tubercle and subscapularis as a uh, ligament of the glenohumeral ligament uh, complex uh, glenohumeral joint this also restricts inferior and anterior translation of the glenohumeral joint in addition they provide lateral rotation stability uh, at the time of if your arm is adducted the lateral rotation stability is being provided by when this is the abducted position this adducted position so the lateral rotation stability is provided by the coracohumeral ligament so that's all about the ligaments of the uh, glenohumeral. Here you can clearly see that this is arm at the side. You see that uh, inferior glenohumeral ligament complex, middle is in fact loose, but anti superior one is tight. When it is getting to abducted, like in about a 45 degree, you can see that uh, the middle get a tight, whereas superior and inferior is again weak. Whereas when it abduction is increasing greater than 60 degree, or uh, you can see that the superior is loose, middle is loose, but the inferior is taut. But the inferior has two aspects. One is that inferior when it is combined with the lateral rotation, which you can see here, you can see that when inferior is combined with the lateral rotation, this IGHLC is anterior band which is seen here which gets it tight when it is combined with the medial rotation the IGHS as you see uh, the um, a posterior band will get a taut so these are the things that uh, we did see about this ligament with that we wind up the session on the ligaments and capsule in the next video on the glenohumeral joint we'll see about the coraco acromial arch bursa and the shoulder range of motion and finally we'll move on to the integrated function static dynamic stabilization etc and the upcoming videos until then stay tuned and if you like the video don't forget to click the like button and those who haven't subscribed kindly subscribe to our channel